Okay, so somewhat embarrassingly, Sobek is actually one of my favorite weapons in Warframe. For those who are unfamiliar, Sobek is a full auto Grenier shotgun used by the trooper enemy as well as Executioner Knock. It's not particularly good, but when paired with mods like Acid Shells, it becomes plenty of fun to use. And considering that I don't think we're getting Kuva Sobek or Sobek Wraith anytime soon, I got to wondering if I could make this gun's steel path viable. Not only that, but could I make a setup that, dare I say, makes the Sobek overpowered? Well, to find out, let's take a trip from Zero to Hero with everybody's favorite Grenier shotgun. So long as you don't count any of these, that is. To begin, let's take a look at Sobek out of the box. It's got good status chance and relatively high damage per pellet, as well as a large magazine size and ammo pool. Unfortunately, its IPF spread is mostly impact, which kinda sucks on a status gun. Moreover, it only has a multi-shot of 5, tying it with the Tigris for the second lowest pellet count of any shotgun. It's also got a very slow reload speed and the slowest fire rate of any fully automatic shotgun. To get sort of a baseline, I'm gonna throw a relatively generic build onto our humble Sobek. We've got Primed Point Blank, a few Galvanized mods, and several Forma, so while it's by no means a beginner build, it's not particularly advanced either. To get our damage baseline, we'll be testing with the Gold Standard, a level 190 Corrupted Bombard. To beef things up a bit, I'm gonna throw on Primary Merciless, and I'm also going to drop Shattering Justice in exchange for Acid Shells. How Acid Shells works in a nutshell is that, when you kill an enemy, they deal 450 corrosive damage plus 45% of their max health as blast damage in a 15 meter radius. Because it uses a percentage of the enemy's max health, it makes prioritizing beefy targets very strong, as their death can quickly wipe a room of weaker mobs, implying you can kill the beefy target in the first place, of course. It does have some major drawbacks though, like being line of sight and suffering from pretty heavy damage fall off at the edge of its range. Because we're adding Acid Shells, I'm gonna throw in a couple of Corrupted Butchers to show off the radial damage. Not terrible, but I should probably mention that Butchers are weak as shit and they still didn't die. You can prioritize an even beefier target to kill them, but killing high-level Butchers is no real accomplishment, so we're gonna have to step it up a bit. A general rule in Warframe is that the more your setup violates the Geneva Conventions, the more damage it deals. That's why we'll be introducing Saren, who has a few abilities that can push our Sobek, and specifically Acid Shells, into god-tier territory. First up is Toxic Lash, which has a lot of helpful properties for the purposes of this setup. This ability is really complex under the hood, and honestly, I don't really understand it myself, so I'm just going to talk about the parts of this that help our Sobek. When you activate Toxic Lash, you get a 30% damage boost that scales with ability strength. Toxic Lash inflicts a separate instance of damage that has a guaranteed Toxin proc, and the damage of this attack benefits from damage and Toxin mods present on your weapon even if said Toxin mods are combined into other elements. What makes this helpful for us is that enemies killed by the Toxin from Toxic Lash still activate the explosion from Acid Shells. And furthermore, Acid Shells Explosion procs the Toxin from Toxic Lash, which can then kill enemies and cause them to proc Acid Shells. Yeah, I'm sure you see where this is going. I also want to add that kills with Toxic Lash add to the stacks of that primary Merciless we threw on earlier. And while the Arcane doesn't seem to boost the damage of Toxic Lash, it does make it easier to kill your patient Zero, which is very helpful. Another important aspect of Toxic Lash is that its Toxin proc effectively triple dips with faction damage mods, so we're gonna throw on a Primed Cleanse Grenier as well. Considering that our Acid Shell's damage is going up, I'm gonna swap out the Butchers for Lancers, as the Butchers die too quickly by this point. So, you remember like 30 seconds ago when I mentioned that Toxic Lash has its damage boosted by Toxin even if it's combined into other elements? Well, it seems that effect still carries over if you boost your weapon's corrosive damage artificially through the use of Venom Dose. Venom Dose is an augment for Saren that allows her to give her weapons a 100% boost to corrosive damage, scaling with power strength. It seems that Toxic Lash considers this corrosive damage when calculating its proc damage, making it deal a shit ton more damage. So we're in a decent spot as is, but not quite Steel Path viable. I mean, it certainly leagues better than a no Saren Sobek, but what else can we do to elevate this weapon to meet the video title's promise? So, Toxic Lash's gluttonous behavior when it comes to faction damage boosts is actually even more exploitable than I first let on. The reason for that is because of the fact that Rhino's Roar counts as a universal faction damage buff. On top of that, it's also Rhino's Helmet ability, albeit in a diminished form. So, let's pop that bad boy on Saren and see how Acid Shells looks now. Well, that's quite the improvement. 
I think at this point the fundamentals of this loadout are in order, so we'll stick with this going forward. From now on, we're just going to be trying to find ways to squeeze more power strength out of our build without totally kneecapping its viability. The easiest and most obvious way to do this is to throw on growing power. Sobek is already a status shotgun, so it's not too hard to proc the aura's effect, and the 6 second duration is more than enough time to get all three of our abilities off. I'm also going to take Sling Strength from Matarai, which is an extra 40% strength on top of that. So let's see how much a 65% boost in strength can do. I think at this point this build is pretty much overkill already, and to prove that, I'm going to swap out the Bombard for Grenier Gokstat officers. For reference, these guys have 1000 base health and armor, and at this level they have values of 143,794.96 health and 20,410.64 armor, which provides them a damage reduction of 98.55%. This puts their effective health at a whopping 10,264,383.6 hit points. All of this is according to the wiki calculator, and I didn't bother to double check the math, so I'm putting a lot of faith in whoever made that. Anyhow, let's demonstrate the setup on these guys. I hope by now I've made the point that this is definitely steel path ready, but there are a few more ways to get just a bit more power strength, primarily through the use of Warframe Spectres, specifically the Nidus Spectre. You see, the Nidus Spectre can cast Parasitic Link, which boosts your Warframe's power strength by a further 28%. And for those wondering, the Equinox Spectre's Provoke only boosts strength by 20% and is also way less reliable. That and Provoke's buff is an additive 20%, while Parasitic Link's buff is a multiplicative boost, meaning it multiplies our modded power strength by 1.28 times. I do also want to mention that by the time this video is released, the new Molt Augmented Arcane will be out, but as I was putting this together, I didn't really have any way to max it that quickly. I'm just using Arcane Rage for now, but if you get your hands on a maxed out Molt Augmented, that would give you a further 60% boost in strength, so long as you kill 250 enemies. Anyways, let's get that Parasitic Link buff, prop Growing Power and Sling Strength, and see how high our numbers go. I'd say that's pretty damn good considering where we started, but I know a lot of people will screech in the comments that this is just a simulacrum build. So let's take it out on the town and see how well it performs on the steel path. I do want to say real quick though that I am dropping Matarai for Vazarin so I don't die constantly, along with a quirked up Panzer goaded with the sauce. Okay, let's reduce some enemies to slag. So, after all that, I'd say that the Sobek is definitely Steel Path material and then some. This build as a whole does struggle with survivability, but like I said, you can use stuff like Vazarin to circumvent that pretty easily. Still, Steel Path or not, this loadout is fun as hell to use, and the large amount of damage numbers makes my serotonin increase almost to pre-depression levels. Then I think about how there's still no Kuva Sobek, and it drops right back down again. 
This actually also works for the Jack Katag and Detron too, provided you're using the Vulcan Blitz and Thermomagnetic Shells mods, respectively. I didn't mention them earlier because I think Sobek is best for this strat, and admittedly I'm super biased, but all of the same principles discussed apply to those weapons too. I will say that you can definitely make this build stronger by using mods like Energy Conversion, or by using Arcanes like Molt Vigor or Pax Bolt. But because those go away after a single ability and you need to cast three here, I find them to be too finicky for me to use them on the regular. Matter Ice Sling Strength was used in testing, though I don't know if I value the extra 20% strength over Hardened Wellspring enough to give up the energy regen. To be honest, I don't even value the Wellspring enough to give up Vazarin. Anyways, with all that said, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed accompanying me on this journey of making a normally mediocre shotgun exceptionally powerful. If you want to suggest any improvements, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe to boost my ego, and ring the bell if you want to be notified when I upload once every 17 years. I also have a Discord server that you can join if you want to suffer an aneurysm, the link to which will be in the description. I also stream every Sunday at 5.30pm CST, so drop by if you want to get an aneurysm that way instead. With all that said, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all again with my next upload in 2039.